If you look at the heart, you've got the right and left atrium up top, and the right and left ventricles down low. Each of these pairs is separated by a wall, called a septum. A ventricular septal defect is when this lower wall, the ventricular septum, has a gap in it after development. The septums form during development as this muscular ridge of tissue grows upward from the apex, or the tip, and then fuses with a thinner, membranous region coming down from the endocardial cushions. Voila, two separate chambers. If these don't fuse though, then a gap is left between the two chambers. In other words, a ventricular septal defect, or VSD. And the majority of these cases are caused by a defect in the membranous portion of the septum. Among babies, VSDs are actually the most common congenital defect overall, but 30 to 50% of VSDs can spontaneously close during childhood, which makes ventricular defects less common with adults. VSDs are associated with fetal alcohol syndrome and Down syndrome, and are often associated with other cardiac deformities as well. All right, so now let's check out what happens with blood flow now that there's this opening between the two ventricles. I'm gonna actually switch to this super duper simplified heart instead just because it's easier to show what's going on with blood flow. All right, so deoxygenated blood comes from the body to the right atrium, and then flows down into the right ventricle, where it now can be either pumped out to the lungs, as normal, or pop over to the left ventricle. Since the pressure on the left side of the heart's actually higher than on the right, and blood likes to flow from high pressure to low pressure, it actually prefers to just keep going onto the lungs. When oxygenated blood comes back from the lungs to the left atrium, and then the left ventricle, now again, it's got two choices. It can either be pumped out to the body or flow over to the right ventricle through the gap. Since now it's in the left ventricle, which has higher pressures, some of the blood flows over to the lower pressure right ventricle. So a left to right shunt has been set up where oxygenated blood takes an extra trip to the lungs. Since there's more oxygenated blood over here, patients will have increased oxygen saturation in the right ventricle and pulmonary artery. Also, that blood flowing through the VSD can be heard as a hollow systolic murmur at the lower left sternal border. If it's a small VSD, it might be asymptomatic. As the size of the VSD increases though, symptoms tend to get more severe and present earlier on in life. But what sort of symptoms? Well, as blood is shunted to the right side, blood volume increases on the right side which might lead patients to develop pulmonary hypertension, or higher pressures on the pulmonary side. If pressure increases to a point where the right side's more than the left side, then the direction of blood flow through the VSD can switch from being left to right to right to left, a condition known as Eisenmenger syndrome. Now deoxygenated blood is escaping out to the systemic circulation and being pumped out to the whole body via the aorta. This essentially means that less oxygen is being delivered to the tissues, which definitely isn't good. Patients can present with cyanosis. Specifically, it can appear as bluish skin in certain areas like around the lips or the fingertips. Due to the severity of these complications with larger defects, surgical closure of the VSD might be needed. Thanks for watching. You can help support us by donating on Patreon or subscribing to our channel or telling your friends about us on social media.